Of course, you know what gluten is and what it does to your body. Everyone knows what gluten is. But what if you don't? What if after all these years of people talking about gluten, like they know exactly what it is, what if you're still feeling confused? And what if you could use a crash course in all things gluten and how it might be impacting your Crohn's or colitis? Hey there, Karen Haley here, your IBD health coach, jumping in real quick to let you know that the following is an excerpt from my podcast, The Cheeky Podcast for Moms with IBD. This section of the podcast is from episode 34. If you want to hear the whole episode, all you have to do is look for the link below in the comments, or you can find The Cheeky Podcast for Moms with IBD on Apple, Spotify, pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, thanks for listening, Mama, and on with the show. Step one. Let's talk first about step one. Remember, there's three steps. Step one. Step one is all about finding the obvious and the not-so-obvious gluten. I mentioned that food manufacturers like to hide gluten in their products. These are foods like salad dressing, soy sauce, marinades, seasoning packets is a big one, pre-seasoned meats, cans of soup. You can find hidden gluten in all of those types of foods. Even non-food items might contain gluten like toothpaste. I know, toothpaste, right? But makeup, shampoo, conditioner, even some medicines and supplements can contain gluten. It's crazy. It's a minefield. When you really start to look out for gluten, you'll be surprised at how many places you find it. And I wish I could tell you that Those things I just shared with you, that was your exhaustive list as to places where you might find gluten, but I'm really just getting started here. If you really want to be serious about avoiding gluten in places where it's obvious and places where you need that gluten-free detective badge that I talked about, I've got a cheat sheet with your name on it. It's my obvious and not so obvious gluten-free cheat sheet. You can take this cheat sheet with you. You can put it in your purse. You can pin it to your refrigerator. Make multiple copies and put it wherever you need it to help you at the grocery store, at a restaurant, while traveling, eating at friends' houses. You know, America is opening up. Hallelujah. We are opening up and people are getting out there more. Now that more people are vaccinated, more people are getting out more businesses are opening. So this gluten-free resource, it can definitely come in handy even when you're away from the house. So if you want my complete gluten-free cheat sheet, you can find a link for it right in the show notes. I will put a link there. Or you can go directly to karenhaley.com forward slash gluten-free to check it out. That's K-A-R-Y-N-H-A-L-E-Y.com forward slash gluten-free. Okay, so... Step one of your super sleuth gluten-free detective skills is knowing to look for the obvious and, more importantly, the not-so-obvious hidden gluten. Get that gluten-free cheat sheet and you'll be all set. You'll know what to look for. Now, step two. Let's talk about step two. Step two is developing your super sleuth gluten-free detective label reading skills. This is a must, my friend, and it ain't as easy as it sounds, let me tell you. Food manufacturers, they aren't required to say this contains gluten on the package, not on the front of the package, not in the nutrition facts panel, not in the ingredients, not even in the allergens list. But the FDA does require that if food does contain any of the top allergens, it does need to be listed on the allergens list. And that allergens list is located on most products just under the ingredients list. The good news is that wheat is a common allergen. If you can see that as good news, but it's helpful for us. So ding, ding, ding. Remember, wheat is a big player in the world of gluten. So when you're playing super super sleuth gluten-free detective, the first place you want to look is the allergens list. And if you see the word wheat, you know it contains gluten. You're going to just put it back on the shelf, step away from the product. Nobody will get hurt. Just off limits. Now, that's the first part of step two. Now, if the product doesn't contain wheat in the allergens, That is awesome. You're ahead of the game, but it doesn't mean that you're out of the woods just yet. 
since gluten goes by so many names, it's now time to search the ingredients for those names. Do you see the words wheat, obviously, barley, rye? Do you see words like brewer's yeast, bulgur, bran, malt, matzo, triticale, because they all contain gluten. It doesn't say gluten, doesn't even say wheat in most of them, but they contain gluten. Remember, there's lots of hidden gluten out there. And this is where that gluten-free cheat sheet will come in handy. So grab it and then you can take it with you when you go to the grocery store. Now, I promise you, you're not going to need that list forever. I don't need a list anymore because I've been doing it so long. But it will give you a leg up on gluten until you get comfortable identifying hidden gluten in the food you buy. And before we move on from step two, I want to give you just a couple bonus tips. Some packaged foods will say gluten-free on the label, but half of these foods, they already are gluten-free. And the manufacturer is just using that word, using the words gluten-free, to hike up the price of the food. So don't be fooled by these false claims. Always be a skeptic when you see gluten-free on the front of the package. Does it need to be gluten-free? Because actually some foods are just naturally gluten-free. Another bonus tip regarding step two in your label reading, in order for a food to be considered gluten-free, it must contain less than 20 parts per million of gluten in that food. Now, while that might seem very, very low to you, that amount of gluten, to many super sensitive folks with IBD and also to some with celiac itself, that might not be low enough. I've had clients who haven't been able to tolerate even that amount. And if this is the case for you, you can choose foods that are labeled certified gluten-free. I bet you've seen that label before. It ensures that it was tested and third-party certified that levels of gluten in that product are even lower than the industry standard. Usually we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 10 million parts per million. 5 to 10 parts per million. So you can look for that if you're super sensitive. Lastly, I want to say one more thing. Just because you have a food label and you bought the product and you read it, it didn't contain gluten a month ago, that doesn't mean that you can always trust what's on the ingredient list a month later. From time to time, food manufacturers, they change their ingredients. So be on the lookout while you're reading these food labels. Be on the lookout for changes like that. It's happened to me several times over the years of being gluten-free where a product I loved has changed ingredients and now it's no longer safe for me. One last step in my three simple steps to gluten-free super sleuth status is step number three. You're almost there. You almost have your gluten-free detective badge. Let's continue with the last step, mama. Step three says that instead of having to navigate the world of gluten-free, instead of having to be a super sleuth and find every gluten-free version of every food that's out there, do yourself a favor. Make it easier for yourself and just buy foods that are naturally gluten-free. It's tons healthier and it's better for your digestive system anyway. Foods that are naturally gluten-free are whole foods, whole fruit, whole vegetables, unmarinated meats and fish, eggs. Most dairy products are gluten-free, but I want you to be careful with some of them. So some ice creams will contain like cookies and cream or chocolate chunks that will have gluten in them. So be careful with ice cream. Also be careful with cheese that's prepackaged and pre-shredded because sometimes it contains flour to keep it from sticking. Be careful with some cheese spreads because if they add additional ingredients, they sometimes put flour in there. But besides those, most dairy products are gluten-free. You can stick to naturally gluten-free grains, ancient grains like quinoa, millet, and amaranth. Rice is gluten-free, but you might be surprised to know that I am not going to tell you that you should buy brown rice. Now, I know that you're a busy mom and you're probably multitasking while you're listening to this, but give me your complete attention for just a second because this point is really key. I know not everybody is going to agree with this, but I'm telling you, mama, this is the way to go. I like white rice better 
than brown rice, rice. And let me tell you why. Many people choose brown rice because they think it's healthier. But actually, if you're going to eat rice, I like white basmati rice as a better option. Brown rice contains more phytic acid, and phytic acid, if you're not familiar with that, it's that natural coating on rice that makes it harder to absorb the minerals that are in the rice. And so your white rice has less of that because the outer coating has been removed. And brown rice also has higher levels of arsenic. Both of these compounds, they can be challenging for our already compromised gut white rice and especially basmati rice it's easier to digest it's gentler on our digestive system all right makes sense okay so choose basmati white rice what else is naturally gluten-free plain fats and oils are we're talking about butter coconut oil ghee EVOO, that extra virgin olive oil, oils and fats like that, they are naturally gluten-free. Some condiments are gluten-free. Not all condiments contain gluten. So ketchup, yellow mustard, mayo, those are usually naturally gluten-free. Do me a favor though, do yourself a favor. You'll want to always double check the label though. Just like I taught you in step two, how to check the label, because some condiment companies do tend to add gluten. Barbecue sauce is a big one where you see gluten and also some pasta sauces. So those are just a couple places where your condiments might um, have gluten in them. My favorite, absolute favorite gluten-free condiment is coconut aminos. It's made from a coconut, as the name suggests. It's so close to tasting like soy sauce, which does contain gluten, and it's so delish for your salad dressings, for a steamed veggie topper, for Asian dishes. You can find it right in the condiment section of your grocery store. Coconut aminos are awesome. Okay, one last thing. One last thing I want to warn you about as we finish up step three. With all of these naturally gluten-free foods and with the packaged gluten-free foods, remember that just because a food is gluten-free doesn't make it healthy. I hear this, it's so crazy to me, but I hear it all the time from clients, friends, family members. Oh my goodness, even though my mom has passed, I can't even say the word gluten-free without thinking of her because I can still hear her in my head saying, but Karen, it's (laughs) gluten-free. I don't know where gluten-free became synonymous with healthy. Yes, for many of us with celiac and with gluten sensitivity, eating gluten-free is healthier for us. But cookies and pasta and breads and cakes, they're not healthy because they're gluten-free. They're just gluten-free. Crappy food is crappy food no matter what. This has been an excerpt from the Cheeky Podcast for Moms with IBD, episode 34. It's just a snippet from what we talked about on the episode. If you're a mom with Crohn's or colitis and you found this information valuable and you want to hear more, you can hear the whole episode. The link for episode 34 is in the comments. And if you're not a podcast junkie like me and you'd rather gather your gut-loving information from YouTube, which I completely understand because it totally rocks, click subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell and you'll be notified every time a new video drops. Be well, my friend.